I wish that teams that and organizations that transform to agile, like, okay, we need cross-functional teams. So they, they do put a tester on a team or one or more testers on a team. But the team does not understand. Nobody explains the whole team approach to building quality in. And so they continue to throw the testing over the wall to the testers. So now they're doing, you know, scrummer fall or mini waterfall. They're developing and they're waiting for someone else to test it. Hi, I'm here with Lisa Crispin, and we're going to talk a bit about testing in Agile. Uh, Lisa, could you please tell me a bit about yourself? Well, I've been uh, I've been a tester for many, many years and in the software business for over 40 years. Uh, so I've enjoyed working on Agile teams since 2000 and uh, sharing my experiences through the books and and workshops and courses that we, I've developed with with uh, my co-author and business partner, Janet Gregory. And I am currently uh, a freelance uh, trainer and consultant. Um, so I'm just trying to share what I've learned over the many years and, and what other people have, have shared with me and try to help us all solve the easy problems so we can then deal with the hard ones. <laughs> I'm glad to have you, you here today. Uh, let's get to the first question. What is agile testing? Yeah, that's a, I was uh, pleased to see this question because Janet and I uh, have been asked a lot over the years. We've written th uh, three books on agile testing and a book on holistic testing, which is actually the term we prefer now. But the definition that we came up with a few years ago with help from the our testing community, I'm just going to read it from our blog, from our agiletester.ca blog. Uh, collaborative testing practices that occur continuously from inception to delivery and beyond, supporting frequent delivery of value for our customers. Testing activities focus on building quality into the product, using fast feedback loops to validate our understanding. The practice strengthen and support the idea of whole team responsibility for quality. So that's what we had come up with. Um, and you mentioned that you prefer the term holistic testing. Is that the mm -hmm. same definition or is holistic testing different to what you just described? It's basically the same, but with holistic testing, we've been inspired by, well, partly inspired by the DevOps loop. If you look, if you Google the DevOps loop uh, and you look at the images online, there's a testing phase in it, which that makes no sense. And Dan Ashby, quite a few years ago now, came up with his take on the DevOps loop, which is we test here, we test here, we test here, all the way around the loop. And so uh, we developed a holistic testing model that kind of extends that, that from the time that the business has an idea and starts discovery on it to the time where we've already put that idea, those changes in production and observed how people use them and learned and started a new hypothesis, we do t testing activities all the way around that loop. It requires a huge range of skill sets and experience, and it really requires the whole team to do together. The term agile these days, who knows what it means, right? I mean, to me, agile, I liked Elizabeth Hendrickson's definition, which was uh, team is agile if it delivers uh, small chunks of value frequently to customers at a sustainable pace, meaning we do all the good development and testing practices that let us re release with confidence and not have to work crazy hours and things like that. Um, but now agile has just been, people mean all kinds of things when they say it. Holistic we liked better because it encompasses the whole of the development life cycle and the idea that the whole team needs to be involved, that we can't test quality into a product. We have to build the quality in and we have to do that together. Thanks for sharing your, your understanding. I, I've seen the uh, Dan Ashby model that you've talked about, and it's like mm -hmm. um, it's like the DevOps um, cycle, but it's just like test here, test here, test here, and like all these right. arrows. Now, um, I'm I'm curious about your opinion on um, with, whether or not you think all teams need testers, and if so, why? If not, why not? 
That's a that's an excellent question, and I I think we are in a period where we see a lot of change in that. Um, and I guess what I would say is all teams need good testing practices, <laughs> and if they have the skill set on the team, however that's provided, they're good to go. Um, what I see with teams that I've seen teams that in organizations that don't have testing specialists anymore and, and the team practices test driven development. So they're writing their code at the unit level test first, getting good designs, getting code that's operable, maintainable and testable. The teams are practicing something like behavior driven development so that they spend time to get shared understanding of what they're about to change uh, and use concrete examples of desired behavior to turn those into tests that guide development for the business facing value. Uh, teams that do continuous integration, uh, teams that have the appropriate automation of testing, teams that do the appropriate exploratory testing. If they do all those things without testers, great. What I find though is they may do some of those things really well without testers, like test driven development. That's a, that's a coding practice to design your code. Um, they may do continuous integration well in terms of their infrastructure and their deployment pipelines. But what I've seen is when you look at their business facing tests that test the business facing value, they're usually not well designed. They're not providing adequate test coverage because the people writing production code, they know how to test at the unit level and perhaps at the API level, but they don't necessarily have the expertise to design tests that make sure we deliver what the business wanted. Testers, we're good at specifying tests. Coders are good at writing code. We need we need both of those skill sets involved. Um, but like I say, if you had people on the team that can do all the testing skills, um, then fine. But if you, I've my experience is that when you have a testing specialist at least one who can act as a testing consultant for the team and help everybody get those testing skills, you're gonna be in a much better position to succeed, especially with continuous delivery and continuous deployment. So, um, so I, heard you, I, I heard you say that like technically no, because you need good testing practices. Um, and then there are ways in which people could show that, for example, exploratory testing, um, having CICD, um, but behavior driven development and so on. But then let's say you've got a team that has decided, okay, well, we don't need testers. We're doing the things you described. Um, and for, for me, like when it comes to, I don't know, when I see posts on LinkedIn, you sometimes you feel like you're preaching to the choir and that's how I sometimes feel like, and for, for teams that don't have a tester and, and then you talked about say, lack of coverage how would a team know that they have this issue that like they think they're doing all the right things but in fact they do have a problem like could you maybe give some examples of the symptoms of such a problem yeah some of the red flags i see is they say oh well when we get issues reported from production we we do triage to see which are actually bugs and which are missed requirements and my thought is those are both things you don't want to happen and why are you not doing the uh, the upfront the the work at the early stages of working on a feature to get the shared understanding so you don't miss any requirements? So these teams tend not to know about techniques like risk storming and things that have come more from the testing world. Um, you know, agile development is meant to be focused on preventing bugs, not finding them. And so, having bugs found in production, people say, "Oh, well, you're always going to have some bugs." Well, I know a lot of teams who have managed to achieve the zero defect, zero defects escaping from development into production. It's doable, but you need a lot of testing expertise as you're building the quality into the code, as you're give, developing it. You need somebody to ask the what if questions to help thinking outside the box. What might the customers do that we didn't expect? And no, you're not gonna cover everything. Uh, our systems today are incredibly complex, this crazy distributed cloud architecture and microservices and all the things. So 
yes, we may not be able to prevent all the bugs. However, we're going to have good monitoring and observability and have the testing skills on the right side of that DevOps loop to watch production, to see what's happening, spot anomalies, look at the patterns, and try to find the issues before they cause customer pain and be in and the, the team would have already created the ability to either revert changes very quickly uh, so that they don't cause customer pain or to get fixes out to production very quickly. And I just see that teams that do not have testing specialists are going to struggle with that more because they're missing a, a set of skills that's good at spotting risks, spotting anomalies, spotting patterns. The, the teams I've worked in over the years, so often it's a tester on the team that notices on the big board everybody's looking at this monitoring production. Oh, what was that spike or what was that error? You know, it's often the testers that notice. Um, there might be a lot of reasons for that, but I just feel like we are all victims of, cog of unconscious bias. <laughs> And I think having a diversity of skills and backgrounds and experiences on a team is the way we can overcome those. And we can't, everybody can't know everything about everything. You know, we're not all experts at everything. We need our data experts. We need our operations experts. We, we need all those people. We can't all know everything. So it's a, it's a complex world. Like when, like, I agree with you that people can't be experts in everything, but then I do see this tendency. Sorry. Um, I agree with you that we can't all be experts at everything. Um, but then I do see this tendency for some companies to see testing as a practice or as something that can be like fairly easily taken over or split between other people. Why do you think then that there is that common misunderstanding where? They're like, oh, we don't need testers. We could just, um, like, we could just uh, do test-driven development or, you know, we could just, like, do the exploratory testing ourselves. It's just a lack of knowledge. I mean, most development managers, I would say, don't understand the whole wide range that is the field of testing. <laughs> And all the different testing activities that that might we might need to do, um, and most business executives will say they value quality, um, but the truth is they don't understand how investing in quality will pay off. Uh, it does require a big investment. You do need time for teams to learn techniques like test driven development that pay off really well, but you've got to make that investment up front, and everybody's in a hurry. And yeah, they think that they can be efficient by, by cutting out the people. Um, it's just a lack of, a lack of knowledge, lack of understanding. And I think there's probably still some, you know, scar tissue from the days, uh, and I'm sure it still happens, where before we had automated regression tests, there was testers sitting in a cubicle going through manual, a list of manual regression checks. That they were doing over and over and over. Uh, and that's what people thought as a tester. And we can, we can automate that stuff. So we don't need, so they think we can automate that. We don't need a tester. They don't think about all the things they can't automate. And they especially don't think about having those early planning meetings when they start working on a new feature to have somebody asking the good questions that nobody else thought of to, to try to, to try to detect the unknown unknowns before they get out to production. Okay. Um, now, you've touched a bit on this already. Uh, what, is the important, what is the importance of test automation in an agile team? Uh, test automation is, to me, a prerequisite to, to long-term success and to doing continuous delivery. I've heard people say they did continuous delivery without test automation. I... <laughs> but we have to automate the things that can be automated to free our time up to do the important things that need our, our human observational skills and critical thinking skills and, and, uh, and just instincts and gut feelings um, and ability to communicate and collaborate. And 
you know, not only do I feel like teams, most teams need a test, at least one testing specialist, but I think they should be working together. That person should be pairing with people who aren't testers, developers, um, operation specialists, platform engineers, all kinds of designers, product owners, and even better to be working on an ensemble where you have somebody from each specialty there so that if you have any questions that come up, that person's right there to answer the question. Uh, and, and you can work really efficiently that way. Um, I'm kind of losing track where I was going on that. <laughs> I forgot your original question. Um, uh, the question was, um, what is the importance of test automation in an agile team? Oh, test automation. So we can't have the tester doing all these other things like participating in an ensemble, um, doing exploratory testing or helping with exploratory testing, uh, accessibility testing. That's one of the things you're not going to be able to automate. Um, security testing. There are all kinds of things where maybe in addition to automation, we have that what Janet and I call human centric testing. People say manual testing. That makes it sound really somehow unimportant and even something you wouldn't want to do. <laughs> Uh, when in fact it is something that's very important and we need a lot of um, knowledge and skills to do it well. And we need to try to pass those skills on to the people on our team that don't know them yet. But they're not going to become experts. You know, we just, we have these, you know, hierarchies of learning where you, it's good to learn something about a lot of different things that helps you work on a team, helps you communicate. And we need our deep skills to provide our unique value to the team. Okay. Uh, so this leads me to my next question. Um, now, how can teams go about developing their test expertise, or um, I can't remember the term you used earlier, um, if they choose to not have a dedicated tester? Well, there's lots of resources out there. We're so lucky these days. Your books would be a good place to start, actually. Um, and then courses, like the courses that Janet and I have designed for our holistic testing courses, those are designed for the whole delivery team. They're not they're not designed for testers specifically. So they're designed for the whole team, get together, learn all these different techniques to do the technology-facing testing, the business-facing testing, the tests that guide development, the tests that help us critique the product and learn. Um, that's something the team can learn together. And there are lots of other resources. Ministry of Testing has tons of content online. Uh, Test Automation University. The, there's all kinds of places that have great content. Lots of great books. Um, we have no shortage of material. And so if these teams spend time, maybe they have a book club together. Maybe they watch a video course together. They watch webinars together. They do exercises. They practice. You know, if we're going to get good at a skill, you know, people who write production code do coding dojos and katas. We need to practice testing in the same way. If they devote their energy, of course, they're going to be able to get better at it. But why wouldn't they want to just have a person on the team that can help them learn those things a lot quicker? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, for, for, for me, um, one idea around that as to why you might not want to have a specific person is, I guess, budget. You may think, okay, well, everyone else could have the skills and that's like one less person. Uh, but then another is, you know, when it comes to like, there's this idea of quality being a team responsibility, but then if you have a tester, um, I've seen teams not quite know how that works, having both a tester, um, as well as uh, quality being owned by the team. Uh, but going back to my, my previous question, what I'm, I'm curious about to hear from you uh, uh, more specifically your recommendations. So obviously you recommend your course. I'll add the link in the description uh, because there is a lot of information out there. Um, but then if you, um, but you're, you're like an expert in the field. So, I mean, I would say any recommendations from you, you know, hold some weight. Um, anything specific, like any blogs that you would recommend people or teams look into or books specifically that you'd like to mention that I could add it to the description? Um, because Ooh. I know while there's so many things out there, um, when you don't know much about a topic or you're not an expert at that topic, mm -hmm. then 
you're kind of just left to whatever you end up happen to Google or what shows up or mm -hmm. whatever your friend happens to use. Yeah, I think first uh, the team should think about what is, you know, the, what are the needs of their business domain? So, you know, I worked on it I've, when I worked for Pivotal, um, just to give you an example, the team developing Cloud Foundry, which is a tool for developers, they had the domain knowledge. That's one of the important things Hezra's provided in a lot of teams is, is domain knowledge. They had the domain knowledge. They didn't necessarily have the testing knowledge. And so what they did, uh, and Elizabeth Hendrickson was, was uh, involved in managing that team, is they hired people who had testing expertise and, were, and had the coding expertise. And they pretty much acted as consultants to help people learn those skills through pairing with them through workshops, things like that. Um, on the other hand, things like I, I worked for a financial services company where our product was, um, software to manage people's retirement accounts, uh, and do trades, uh, for mutual funds and things like that. It's very complicated and it's people's money. And we actually spent more time testing than we did coding. We had usually had more testers on the team than we had coders, even though the programmers also help with testing because the, the Programming was fairly straightforward, but testing all the potential scenarios that could happen was crazy. So they need to think, what level of skill do they need? And um, and so books I'd recommend, um, tons of books, like I say, your books. Explore It by Elizabeth Henderson is one I always recommend because exploratory testing is so important. And that is a book that has a wide audience. So anybody can pick up that book and, and benefit from it. And it's an easy read. Um, I think the, I think the leading quality book from, uh, Ronald Cummings, John and always peer is a good one in terms of understanding why quality is important and how to speak to the business and make them understand it's important. Um, I like, um, uh, Emery Charrett's quality coach book, which is, she's doing it as a subscription. You get a, a chapter every month, uh, because that helps you understand kind of the whole domain of quality. Uh, and different aspects of it and how to help people learn about it. Um, I mean, I guess that's kind of meta. It maybe is design more at quality coaches, but if you don't very much, don't know very much about building quality in the software, that could be a place to start. Um, uh, I've, I've just, I've just blanked out on other, I just, oh, I just read a really good book, How to Test a Time Machine by Noemi Ferrer, I think is her name. And uh, that's kind of a soup to nuts book on testing that um, was very new, very up to date. Even even includes using AI to help with testing and testing AI apps, that kind of thing. Uh, so I think that's one anybody could benefit for. So that's just what's off the top of my head. I'm sure okay. Thanks for sharing your recommendations, and I'll, I'll add the links to the description. Um, I'm, I'm now, curious. what basic ones? Sorry, what did you say? I think the books, you know, these basic testing books, like the ones you've done are very helpful to anybody. Um, yeah. People, people can get in touch with me. I can give you more ideas. Yes. Yes. Um, now I'm curious about what do you wish more people knew about agile testing? Well, I wish that teams that and organizations that transform to agile, like, okay, we need cross-functional teams. So they, they do put a tester on a team or one or more testers on a team. But the team does not understand. Nobody explains the whole team approach to building quality in. And so they continue to throw the testing over the wall to the testers. So now they're doing, you know, scrum or fall or mini waterfall. They're developing and they're waiting for someone else to test it. And I've seen that ramped up to a much higher level when an organization says, okay, now we're gonna do continuous delivery. So you testers, hurry up, test faster. It's just not gonna work. And I wish people understood, as Elizabeth, again, I'm quoting Elizabeth Hendrickson, testing's not a phase. It's part of software development. Along with coding, along with design, along with you know all the other things, architecture, operations, all the things we do, to create and run a software product, um, 
it's not a separate thing. And so it's part of what we need to be doing every day. Like I say, all the way around that whole software development life cycle, both sides of the DevOps loop. Um, and I wish people understood that. What, what common mistakes do you see in agile testing? Yeah, just a mis just the lack of understanding that the whole point of agile is everybody collaborating together to deliver a high quality product. Uh, and the testers have to be part of that continually. The other biggest mistake I see people make is they don't understand how to work in those small chunks. You need to slice all your features into tiny chunks and come up with a release strategy so that you can deploy them frequently to production, lower your risk because you've only done a tiny change. So if it causes problems, you just revert it. You know what happened. You need your good release strategies like feature release feature toggles or uh, blue green deploys or any you know any kind of good feature strategy to hide changes from your customers until you're confident for your customers to see them. Um, I, I hear people say all the time, oh, but I can't make that story any smaller. Yes, you can. And the teams I've been on that have been successful and become high-performing teams where we were happy and our customers were happy, we learned every story is a consistent size. They're tiny. We can finish them in a day or two. We can put them in production whenever we want to because we're not, we know we're not going to affect customers with them until we're ready to do that. We have all these great tools to watch production and learn from it and and make sure that we don't cause any kind of disaster. Um, but you can't do that if you don't first slice your features down into tiny, consistently sized stories. And so that's something that you can learn to do. It's not, not that hard, but people think it's impossible until they try. Yeah, no, but I guess people like me to learn that. I remember at the second company I worked at, um, we did what you described. And I didn't quite realize because I was still so like junior in my career how amazing that was, or how I'm not I wouldn't say unique, but how 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 such a good practice it was. Because I remember branches weren't supposed to be um, I'll say what was the term live. They couldn't be more than a day old. Um, we use feature toggling so that, and then you, we also use uh, canary releases. Mm -hmm. So even, yeah. and then there was very clear, um, you could easily then also see once you went live, how things are going. So then with the Canary release, if things aren't going quite so well, then you, you roll back. Right. Um, now my, my, my last, my last question for you is if people want to learn more about agile testing, where do you think they should go? Well, I, of course, I recommend our books, um, our latest well, our latest book is a free mini ebook called Holistic Testing, Weak Quality into Your Product. It's only 37 pages long. Hooray, we finally wrote a really tiny book. And you can download that for free on agiletestingfellow.com. Um, you don't even have to give us your email, just download it. Because uh, we just want to spread that idea around and help people understand it and how to use that visual model to help their team come up with a testing strategy that makes sense and helps them throughout the software development life cycle. And uh, our other Agile testing books, I, I would start with Agile Testing Condensed. It's only 100 pages uh, available on LeanPub and Amazon. And our other books, of course, are great. Agile Testing and more Agile Testing, they're just 550 pages long each. So we don't expect anyone to read them cover to cover. But um, our agiletester.ca website has a lot of free resources on it, including some chapters from our books, um, our quick tools for agile testing, our feature chat sheet, lots of little tools that people can use and our blog. And then we also have a, Janet and I do a blog on agiletestingfellow.com and I do a blog on my own website, lisachrisman.com. And I also put a lot of other resources on my website and try to point people to them. So, um, so those are all good places. And of course, like I say, Ministry of Testing, uh, Agile TD Zone from Trindig, those are all good places to go. Um, get gets information, De whatever your experience and skill level, there's, there's something out there to help you learn more. Sweet. Sweet. I'll make sure to include links in the description as well for what you just mentioned. Uh, if people want to get in contact with you, uh, how can they go about doing that? Oh, just 
I'm happy for people to email me, uh, Lisa at lisacrispin.com or, and, uh, I'm on LinkedIn, uh, Twitter, blue sky, Macedon, and, uh, Lisa Crispin is my handle on all of those places. So I'm, I should be pretty easy to find. Um, but if you go to my website, you'll also find links to all my social media. Um, so that's, yeah, I, I try to, I try to watch all those. I find I've gotten a lot better, uh, keeping an eye on LinkedIn and using LinkedIn now that Twitter has become such a dumpster fire. So, um, it's hard to keep up with all the socials, but, uh, I love talking about testing and, uh, anybody who wants to book a little video chat with me, I'm happy to do that. Sweet. Thanks heaps for your time, Lisa. Oh, thank you so much, Nicholas, for wonderful talking with you. Good questions.